I now request Ms. Kitty Miglani to present her paper. Let's welcome Ms. Kitty Miglani. Today, I teach Miglani standing here in front of the presentation of the topic that is financial planning a key to success. Financial planning is not what you mean by finance. Finance, what do you mean by finance? Finance is regarded as a client of business. Yes. Finance is regarded as a client of business. It is one of the basic foundation on which all the all the business enterprises are built upon. Now, what do you mean by financial planning? It enables an individual to make informed judgments and protect an individual from taking a very wrong decisions. For the purpose of any nation, an individual needs to have a knowledge about its investment criteria and for improving its overall personality, an individual uh, he needs to have an understanding of what financial planning is all about. Uh, for effectively utilizing financial resources and for the planning of a nation, financial planning is must. There are various initiatives which are recently been taken by our government. And in the changing scenario, there are a lot many financial transformations which we have seen in the recent decade. Financial planning is must and it is one of the important elements for it to be to understand its benefits. Now, various efforts are being taken care in the, in the same regard. The study here uh, we provide a better insight, a better knowledge in reference to the same. Financial planning is what? It is about effective money management, saving and then investing in the right direction of financial assets and to form the profits in the same direction. For doing the planning, we need to have a consideration of various factors. That is the past, present and future. Right now where we are standing, in the past what financial resources we will be having and future we, where, we, where we would like to be in the future time span. There are various steps that we need to follow for financial planning. That is, that are, that are as follows. Setting your financial, setting your saving goals, your income, your outgoings, managing your spendings and dealing with the debt. Now, what are various objectives that I have considered in the same? To understand about the basic concept of financial planning is important. To identify what are various initiatives which are being taken by the government of India in order to spread awareness for the same. To understand about the basic concept about the investment criteria. Planning process. Now, what do you mean by planning? What does uh, planning is all about? Planning is where we are and where we want to reach in the uh, future time span. For doing the financial planning, where you need to assess what are various assets which we be having right now in our hands and uh, to understand our current situation. Setting the goals and objectives in reference to the same and assessing the risk and return preferences in accordance to that. Determine what are various constraints, financial planning areas with reference to the taxes, time horizons, liquidity so that uh, various circumstances can be more important. Determine how to create plan and strategies, adjusting and modifying the plan if there is any changes required and evaluating the plan uh, in a systematic manner over a period of time. Simply saving the money is not enough. It has to be invested in the right direction. If we want that, it should increase over a period of time. Because we as individuals, what we are doing, we just uh, put our whole money in the same account, in our FDs, that will not be to serve our overall purpose. Planning can thus be done by any one of the clear assessment of various inflows and outflows. Roadmap to stability, it is all about preparing a sequence of steps one after the other. Then we can assess uh, and then we can identify what are various financial goals are. Saving the money in the right direction, that are all investment, and risk profiling, so diversifying our investment. Diversifying the investment, we basically we need to invest our money in a bunch of uh, securities so that we can maximize our uh, profits in a predetermined manner. Now, what are various initiatives which have been taken up by the government of India? There are various schemes which have been introduced by the government of India uh, for uh, smoothing the process of financial planning, that is Jantan Yojana, other pension Yojana, even Jogi Bhima Yojana. These are the schemes which have been introduced. Pradhan Mantri Suraksha Bhima Yojana, Mondra Bank Yojana, Sukanya Samriti Yojana, additional initiatives. Uh, uh, these are the initiatives and cryptocurrency which uh, Bajaj said has discussed in the previous sessions. So these are the initiatives which the government has taken up uh, in order to balance the uh, financial resources in an equitable manner among each and every individual. Basically what we are analyzing that there is unequitable distribution of wealth and uh, the wealth is there among the few hands. So in order to balance that financial resources among each and every individual, 
the government have introduced uh, these schemes and these initiatives by which we can systematize the financial resources of each and every individual. And this Sukhanda Samriddhi Yojana is, uh, is an initiative for the women empowerment and the financial empowerment of the girl child itself because we as an individual are not paying a lead or consideration for our girl, girls' education. So these are the initiatives that the government have introduced. Now this is one of the uh, scheme, this is one of the case which I have taken that is Choti Bachar Badi Pushari. This is one of the investment criteria which we can take. Uh, in this I have discussed if an individual starts saving rupees 10 per day, a monthly figure comes out to be 300 and yearly figure comes out to be 3600. So this is the magnet which is there behind the investment criteria. If we start uh, investing a money day by day or one rupee can becomes a big magic and this is the magic which I have shown by this case, if you start to invest just 2000 rupees each month from uh, from when you start earning and keep it for 25 years, the final value comes up around 20 lakhs and you can rate of 8% per annum. So this is the case which I have taken for understanding about the basic concept of investment. The individual who all are not having the knowledge reference to the same. Now what does the talks about? Financial planning has become an important area of study. The awareness needs to be generated about the money. And there are various initiatives which are not just taking care of all in various workshops, seminars, in various villages, in various colleges, so that the youth, the uh, rural people who are not having the awareness in reference to the same, may become aware of the various financial concepts and they will start investing. And that is why the linkage program of Adhara and has been made up with the uh, banking system and the financial perspective, so that the awareness in reference to the financial uh, programs and uh, any question uh, from the audience? Kitty, my question is that how this is uh, related with the responsible marketing? Basically, if we start doing investment, if we as an individual, if we start investing in our investment, this is one of the initiatives which I have taken. That, uh, basically, we all are unaware about the investment criteria, we as an individual. So the government, the banks are taking initiative, but they are basically taking the responsibility to make the people aware about the investment perspectives. Because these people are totally unaware. So this is one of the mechanisms by which we can build up the uh, government initiatives. And at the same time, equity the distribution of wealth can also be made up. And while this marketing is also being done by the banks, other than, uh, let's take an example, So this is the literature review in my paper. 
Next, moving ahead, if I talk about the research methodology, my research is anecdotally descriptive. I have collected the content uh, to various sources such as journals, books, and various relevant websites from the internet itself. And again, if I talk about my objective of the study, to understand, to study, and analyze the role of ethics in responsible marketing. So, to move ahead with the discussion, let's first understand ethics and the social responsible marketing. Being socially responsible is when the organization is concerned about the people, society, and the environment with which the uh, business is conducted. In this organization form, socially responsible marketing is taking the moral action that actually encourages the positive impact on all the company stakeholders, including its employees, communities, consumers, and stakeholders. For that purpose, also, even there is a need to develop and implement the social responsible marketing. So in order to foster an ethical and social responsible behavior pattern among the marketers, while you know the marketers are always keen to achieve their business objective, they should also keep in the mind that how do they how they are going to monitor the trends and the shifts in the values and the ethics and the beliefs of the customers. Also, the marketers should forecast the long-term effects of the decisions that pertain to those changes. Sometimes it happens that the organization just to achieve their short-term profit-making objectives, they destroy the, their relationship with the customer. Just for the short-term profit-making, they do not think about building the relationship with their customer for the long-term purpose. So even there are certain ethical issues which are nowadays raised in the marketing. Take for example the marketing research. So sometimes improper market research and grouping can lead to stereotyping that shape undesirable beliefs and attitudes that ultimately affect the marketing behavior. Next, the promotion. So the way the companies are promoting their products are somewhere ethical, somewhere unethical. Say for an example, if I talk about the, let's take an example of Vita. Right? So in one campaign, they have shown, they have highlighted and advertised their products by the uh, by the normal uh, uh, you know, girls who are not the supermodels. Right? Just to uh, show them that the, they should love the way they are. So that is an ethical one. But in some campaigns, they have shown that uh, they have shown and advertised their products by the mod, uh, by the simple models. So in that case, they are the unethical ones. So this is really need to understand that in what situation, in what circumstances, they are the right thing and in what situation they are the wrong thing. Next time, the delivery channel practices. So marketing in ways they are cold calling are done. So this is sometimes very irritating and disruptive for the customer as well. Uh, the solution should be there in a very ethical manner. But nowadays, it sometimes happens that there are the companies just to promote their product or just to deliver the Mike, switching. In this sense, it's a completely advantage 
for corporate sustainability. And for that, we should understand, we should understand that what is the human value, what is the basic meaning of ethic. What is the time of this body? What is the philosophy and so many stories, principles and philosophy related to value Related to the moral value of the person, of the human being, of the citizen, of the nation, of the world. I have just tested two objectives. How to present this paper and how to present this paper. And the main objective of this topic is to provide knowledge for realities of moral value and the ethics in business, to understand the ethical principles, stories and philosophies for betterment of organization, nation and world at large, and to understand law, morality, self and society, which provide a general guidance to decision makers or establish and to be competitive in the present scenario of global business market. We all know, since 1991, when the new economy policy adopted by India in certain region, we all know the other time India was having only 50 day results and they are close to NDRD and IM and got the loan and in return that World Bank asked to just take or impose or adopt the new economy policy in your country. From that very day, this liberation, fragmentation and globalization, this new economy policy that is called LPG, from that very day, the very specific environment, the competition among the business houses of the corporate world, right? Only because of that, multinational company have just invested in our, <coughs> got the reception of the companies in our country, either with the merger, acquisition, or strategic analysis. And from that very day, what happened? Working and doing business under the concept of Western philosophy, there exists. And that practices was more focused on profit at any cost, which has created a chaos in business world because of the resultant has been established as crisis in confidence, widespread of corruption, recurrence of labor management conflicts, and moreover, consumers are frequently cheated or bypassed, naturally exploited, and unfortunately, the victim has become ethical behavior for the future generation like you or the students I am saying. So there is a general realization of the laws of ethics in business among the management thinkers and a several philosophical debates over values like ethics, equality and equity are regularly and frequently going on among the management students of reputed colleges and universities, the strategies of reputed corporates and business houses, representatives of the government, media and social workers, where the expectation of morally correct behavior are being discussed for. I have just told you that there are certain theories, philosophies, time, there is time process, so just I will give you the name of that all theories, philosophies, which has taken into consideration for the situation of this topic. <coughs> and that is, all the people, all the business houses in the world should have the basic philosophy of the theory, like the theory of socialism, which is just consider we dimension, not I dimension, not man man. We should consider hum lo hum. Then we should consider the theory of communism, and that is you all know 
to read and let read geo or gene zone. The third is we should be deep concerned to the others, and that is the name of that <coughs> name of that theory is theory of V on Jawabi. Sir, eight minute time is over, so kindly so speed up. So there are different other theory like theory of shareholder, stockholder, theory of stakeholder, and lastly there is the basic common thing which is for the common good, and that is philosophy. So we should all be nowadays, nowadays for being a responsible function or a citizen for the nation, we should just believe on the philanthropy. Means we should love to the mankind and accordingly do our business, not to harm them. All the stakeholders should be benefited. We should business. Thank you. Um, the research people that uh, the office of co-author have tried to uh, write. This is regarding the uh, CSR or the CSR activities which probably many organizations will take. What is the motive behind doing those CSR activities? Is it like I mean, is it for their selfish motive or do they really actually use it for selfless purposes? And how uh, customers or you know, the audience they look at it? Does those activities really, you know, attach their loyalty towards the cause, brand, alliance? So whatever activities that these organizations they carry out, how far does it reach towards the loyalty of the customers? So certain hypotheses were being evolved, namely five of them, of which two of them I have uh, tried to uh, present you over here. Uh, Peter Drucker in 1986, page 47, says that the purpose of business is to create a customer. But the organizations, after creating a customer, find it very difficult to hold on to them. Why? Because in this fierce battle of uh, competition, where customer satisfaction is of utmost importance, organizations feel it very difficult. They go out from one you know, they attach their loyalty towards the other, other brand, be it any sector, be it or be B2B. So it's imperative that business ensures that customers who have made an initial purchase of the company's offering continue to repeat their purchase behavior in their over time. Holding on a customer for a long time is a very difficult task. Getting a new one may not be that very difficult because the new one has never achieved business. So, to hold on to the existing customers, that is a real task before it is happening. And to that, they have to be providing primary better services. Hence, conversion of prospective customers into a profitable, loyal one mandates that enterprises look beyond traditional market patterns in order to identify and retain existing customers who are possible. So, for them, in the name of CSR, they try to use their land subject to the society. So the objective of this research paper's intention is to comprehend the various factors that influence the attitude towards an organization that purchase and can in context of uh, cost related marketing and major at CRM, otherwise CRM has its other, uh, other form as well. When an organization is associated with the particular cost, of a charity for the program. Audience, please be quiet. Listen to the paper. Okay, so something like, I mean, a uh, small charity like, I mean, as many the poor would be one of the you know, charitable cause which the organization would like to carry out. The uh, advantage behind this is very simple. One is that brand loyalty increases. The other one is it makes, it makes a good to the organization. In the long run, it's a win-win situation for both the, both the ends. The study establishes the corporate motive level of acceptance and cost brand alliance and corporate credibility, which are the antecedents. I'm giving up this, this text up and just the uh, I don't know if they have this but I have tried to show So one of the hypotheses, the first hypothesis is corporate motive, attributed corporate centric motive. That is the corporate motive which behind any organization will have less level of acceptance of cost brand alliance and altruistic attribute motive. That is, if the organizations are really into the uh, profit making scenario, then they will have less of customer loyalty. Other than that, 
I mean, if uh, other than if there if there is any specific reason hidden behind it, if it is for the benefit of the bank bank. So, corporate social credibility is supposed to be uh, one of the aspects of corporate reputation that refers to the degree to which the various stakeholders in comparison to consumers, investors, and others believe in the corporate and companies trust for the expertise. So, this is one of the first hypothesis that I'm trying to draw. Second one is that the higher the level of acceptance of false brand alliance, the stronger will be this perception of corporate credibility. Okay, so the higher the, uh, the customers know that you know, there is an uh, uh, altruistic kind of a, you know, uh, uh, the uh, motive behind, the higher would be the loyalty towards them. Third is corporate credibility has positive effects on attitude towards company. So whatever is their intention is, it is they have a positive attitude towards the company that the company really wants to do. Uh, fourth hypothesis is uh, corporate credibility has positive influence on purchase intention. So whatever is the, uh, the intention of the corporate credibility, it has a direct relation to the, uh, the, uh, the purchase intent. Fifth is attitude towards company has positive influence on purchase intention. So we believe using the SPS data, the, you know, and there were you know, certain samples which were designed and uh, functional for being uh, circulated. So the experimental groups were in the after it was probably to run like it was one way drive in India and put it in the As the advertisements were floated for each year and program, there were 846 respondents, those comprising of uh, results for the secondary members of the student parts of India. A uh, question was sent to these members for collecting the opinions of all the, the respondents and the answers for the other analysis. So the results and discussions were as follows. 846. Excuse me, audience, please listen to the topic. 846 respondents participated in the study, out of which uh, respondents 283, that is 34% are between 40 to 30 years. Uh, 398 comprising 47% are uh, between 31 to 40 years, 129 15% and below. Uh, between 51 to 60 and 36 percent, uh, 36 were uh, respondents, 4 percent are between 61 and above. Out of those 4, 4 76 respondents, uh, sorry, 4, uh, 4 76 respondents are male and 370 uh, respondents were female. And using the SPSS contact uh, alpha uh, uh, the uh, tool, the variables were. So the first uh, hypothesis where the corporate motive attributed as corporate centering of profit motive will have no level of acceptance of cost and land standing one can. Uh, then the one attributed as altruistic motive. So over there the, uh, the results came out as follows. The results found in uh, table 1 and 2 indicates the effect of corporate motive on level of acceptance of CBA which is significant that frequency is uh, F is uh, uh, 541.09 and P value has come out to 0.00. .00. Thus, uh, supporting hypothesis 1. But instead we will come to the table 1 and table 2. These were the figures you know, which came out the results which, was, uh, you, which, was, which came out after using the uh, spaces. Then you come down to the second hypothesis, the higher the level of acceptance of cost and reliance, the stronger will be the perception of corporate credibility. Over there, the mean scores and the significance of difference in mean scores of credibility of the two groups are tested through the dependent sample features. And there were results. So, for the uh, credibility of this uh, uh, presentation, I think I, out of those five, only two are being presented. Those are the three are four that are in the That's all. Thank you. Let's do the very good paper. Very good paper. Please, uh, I request question from the audience. So, well uh, done paper. Thank you. Any question? So, my question is, uh, the rest of the three other hypotheses has been also tested or not? <laughs> but the, for the lack of time, you couldn't do it. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. And what is the outcome? The outcome is like, I mean, we have uh, whatever the motive is behind the, the organization for carrying out the activities. Mm -hmm. It really, you know, adds up to the project. Like people, yeah. people think about, you know, that this is the organization of the project.
So how much time would I have taken for collecting the data from 846 respondents? Oh, it took me about, uh, at least started much before I joined over there. Okay. No, but it's that's the time span. Yeah, time span. Yeah, anywhere between five to six months. Well, very good. Uh, how many uh, uh, questionnaires were rejected, would you say? I mean, you did you reject in a due to wrong data? I mean, actually, there were no uh, biased kind of an approach. <laughs> people who went right to contact most people as they already been used in the process. Like so, it is a uh, convenience sampling or something like a judgmental. So, okay, but suppose if it goes on a uh, random uh, sampling, will you, do you think the result will vary? Not much of it because yeah. it's my personal opinion as well. Yeah. yeah. I, you, I will say you may be biased on your personal opinion. To be. Say, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. It's a very good paper. Thank you very much. I enjoyed the paper. Uh, any, any other questions? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, Dr. Kalotra, please. Discussed uh, the uh, personal financial planning aspects and how government is doing responsible marketing of that concept that each individual should become responsible for its own financial management. Thank you, uh, Ms. Miglani. Uh, you have done a good job. Next was uh, Silpa Bhandari. Uh, she also talked about uh, ethics and responsible uh, marketing and she thinks Ethics is a big dominant factor in responsible marketing, uh, which is, I'm sure, uh, there are so many things in ethics, business ethics and personal ethics, social ethics, all these are there, but very good thinking. I will request both these young researchers to further their work more into research depth and so that they can uh, come with some hypothesis and try to prove or deviate it. Next was by uh, our faculty, Amarendra Chaudhary, who said about uh, new India, new economic policy, how the new policy has bought competition and taken away corruption. It's a very good thinking. I remember uh, in 1996, uh, there was a big uh, conference in Calcutta and the ITC chairman, uh, his name is Yogi Daveshwar, I think, if I am not wrong. Uh, he mentioned this point, that the only way to remove uh, poor quality and corruption is to put competition in place. If there is competition, automatically this will be gone. And I guess our professors are is supporting that. And lastly, very wonderful paper by Dr. Arun Bhatia, our HOD uh, MBA department on uh, this, uh, how uh, societal uh, marketing is affecting the uh, purchase intention. And uh, it does affect purchase intentions and uh, what we used to hear uh, in the childhood that such bolie, acha kaam kariye, aapko liye beneficial hoga. It is coming to be true that uh, people with the correct uh, attitude, correct intention, and those who are responsible, those who are working for the society, they are actually generating more business than those who are trying to cheat the society and making quick buck. Quick buck is not the trend. So I must thank all the presenters. Thank you very much. And I thank the audience for being patient and listening. And that comes to the conclusion of this session. Thank you very much.